I think the ultimate goal for children is the same all around the world. And I've always talked about this from the beginning of the foundation that our children we, who we serve, whether they're rich or poor, <laughs> they all deserve to look beautiful, to be individuals, to feel clean and healthy, to feel smart competent and to be able to go off alone on their own get a job and create their own families finally and that's what I would wish for any child so for an orphan particularly it's pretty special to think that maybe they started off terribly poor and lost their parents lost their family had to live in an institution but they have the hope to go out in the world and not, and not again, recreate the same system. And what we've really done is we've really, we're on the road to systemic change. Because we dare to, to really program for children individually, orphanage kids you know, rarely get to really enjoy a curriculum of sport. We provide a curriculum of sport, we teach kids soccer, or basketball, or baseball. And the kids are really learning in a very creative way, and they're achieving, and we measure their achievement, and we compare it to grade level expectations, and we use both an enriched curriculum as well as the curriculum that's uh, a standard for Ethiopia, for instance. And then in other places, we use educational support. So there may be tutoring in the orphanage, and then we make sure that the tutoring is in keeping with the grade level that's necessary for the child. So it's about scaling to reach more children, replicating best practice, having others to mentor and train so that they can go on to create the same models, and really set policy, standards. Just give me 50 years. That's what I say to people now. Give me 50, it's not three, it's not five, it's not 10. You can't do anything with that. That's the unfairness of aid work. Give me 50 and you'll see, there's gonna be a difference. Haiti's gonna look different, Ethiopia will look different, Vietnam, Serbia, Bulgaria, they'll all be different because we dared to do very deep work. When I was at a session two weeks ago in Haiti where I see these two boys running briskly running, you know. Uh, no shoes in this case, by the way, and little raggy t-shirts and shorts. And they had a blue rimmed circle, plastic. And I didn't get what it was right away, but, and then they had on, attached to it, and as they're running, is a long hanger that's bent to guide this running circle. They could, they were amazing. They never let go. I mean, they were just running like maniacs. But seeing these boys early in the morning with their running circles, I just thought to myself, you know, that's, that's where we are. You know, it's that circle. And we're on the circle. And we're integrated into that circle of the child's life, the life of the community as a circle from beginning to end. We're there to stay, we're there to start, we're there to finish. And I was on the road walking back and I said, oh my God, it's like Ellie said, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. But then you start and then you finish. And it was the running circle. And so then I had this whole vision, I want these running circles, I want millions of children all over this planet down roads with running circles, playfully feeling happy and free.